everyone, it's Clarice. This is Clarice Reads and today I'm going to talk about 2017. I started 2017 in my final year of college, toying with the idea of abandoning my initial plans of taking masters immediately after undergrad and possibly instead going the startup route. And now I've graduated college with honors much higher than I ever expected to get. And I'm currently working in a startup that I'm actually really excited about and one that I do think that I can grow with. I started 2017 single for the first time since first year high school. And I was suddenly thrown into the complicated world of dating and figuring out what I actually wanted from a guy and from a relationship. Now, after much trial and error, I figured out what I actually wanted from a guy and figured out what things were just not worth compromising on and was actually able to get it. I started 2017 with the most inconsistent reading patterns I've ever had with these unrealistic expectations of how much I was actually going to be able to prioritize reading in spite of all these other things that were going on in my life. Now I'm still reading pretty inconsistently but I was able to let go of this pressure that I put on myself to read a lot of books, to post on booktube regularly even if it was unfeasible, even if I had so many other things going on, even if I had other priorities. I still managed to read 63 books, which I feel like is a lot of books considering this was probably one of my weakest reading years that I've had since I started booktubing. But even though I didn't read as much as I did in the previous years, that isn't to say that the reading that I did do wasn't meaningful or impactful to my life at all. I didn't really get to accomplish many of the reading goals that I wanted to have at the beginning of the year, but I did get to reread some old favorites. I also was able to read some books that I'd been putting off reading for a really long time, and I also started getting more into reading non-narrative non-fiction. You know, instead of just reading biographies and memoirs, which I used to read, I started branching out into self-help, business books, books that are related to my career and personal development. So even though reading wasn't a massive part of my life this year in terms of how much time I spent on it or how much I was thinking about it or how much I was actually prioritizing it, I still found my reading taste growing along with me and I still managed to find some new favorite books that I really really enjoyed and that really did make me think. While there were quite a few really amazing books that I read this year, there were only three books that I gave five stars to this year that weren't rereads. The first of those books is Arcadia by Ian Pierce. This was recommended to me and also gifted to me by Katie back in 2016. And it's a book that I'm not surprised that I ended up loving. It just seems like a very typical book for me to enjoy. It's kind of sci-fi, it's kind of fantasy, though it also dabbles on a bunch of other genres. It's not a book that I can give a proper synopsis on, it's just there's so many layers to it. It's one of those books that has multiple seemingly disconnected stories that eventually come together as one. It's a book that I didn't mind taking my time with, that I didn't mind properly immersing myself in, and it's one that I thought about constantly while I was reading it. It's a book that before I read it I was simultaneously excited by and intimidated by, but it's one that I feel was well worth the time reading and one that I feel will stick with me for a long time. The next book that I gave five stars to is kind of a funny one to mention in booktube and it's one that I don't currently have with me because I'm lending it to my brother and that book is The Lean Startup by Eric Rice. I love this book because creating a successful new business from a completely new idea seems like something that is very luck based on the surface. But this is a book that put a logical process to what initially might seem so luck based. It made startups make sense and seem more reachable for a left brain person like me. This is also one of those books that I loved, not just because of the content of the book itself, but because of my personal experience with it. Because at the time I was reading this book, I was actually with a group of people working on a startup that has since then failed. But because I was in the middle of that process itself and because I was seeing the failure happening right in front of my eyes, 
I was able to interact with this book so much. I wrote on the margins. I connected the lessons here to things that I was actually currently experiencing. I told my friends slash co-founders about all the insights that I was getting out of this book. I guess this is a strange book to be recommending on booktube but I also think it's a very important one to read if you are interested at all in the startup world because it really helps you get the proper mindset, the mindset that allows you to fail fast, to effectively get feedback and apply that feedback and those learnings that you got. I feel like it's a mindset that helps not just in startups but also in my everyday life in a strange way. And the last book that I gave five stars to this year was some 40 tales from the afterlives by david eagleman this book is basically 40 different ideas of what the afterlife could be like each chapter was a short story but it also felt kind of like a speculative essay at the same time but even though these stories were supposedly about the afterlife i feel like many of them if not all of them also implied questions about the real world as well a lot of these stories were just really amusing to think about and read a lot of them were just really well written and because of that were also a pleasure to read and many of them just really made you think about life. If any of you have read The Egg by Andy Weir, which is probably the first short story I read that I legitimately enjoyed and really stuck with me after I read it, this book reminds me of that, but like times 40 because there are 40 different stories. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I love fascinating books and I love books that make me think. And this was definitely a book that made me think a lot. It was a book that even though it was so short, I actually took my time with because I was not just reading the words I was also thinking about the words and telling people about my thoughts that were triggered by these stories I loved it so much that even though I bought an ebook of it for my Kindle I also do want to have a physical copy of it because I know that it's a book that I want to read again that I want to write on the margins of. I haven't actually found a physical copy of it yet, but the moment I do find it, I'm probably going to buy it. So those are the three non-reread books that I gave five stars to. And I think by default that also makes them my favorite books that I read in 2017. In many ways, these three books are completely different. Arcadia was really long, intimidating, spanned many different genres, was definitely fiction. The Lean Startup, on the other hand, is very non-fiction. It's a book about the process of making startups. It's a book about businesses. It's a book about failing fast. And some is a short story collection, one of the shortest books I read this year. And I'm not sure sometimes if it counts as fiction or even like a little bit of philosophy. But these three books are all books that I couldn't just read passively. They're books that I couldn't help but actively engage in with my mind and they were all books that in spite of their different lengths were books that I wanted to take my time with they are books that I wanted to read and think about and talk about and they are all books that after this year I know are going to stick with me so 2017 has been pretty great in terms of reading in terms of love life in terms of my education or career in terms of how much I've grown as a person and as much as I love 2017 it's also left me pretty excited for 2018 so thank you so much for sticking with me through 2017 even though I was going in and out of booktube and of course thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one bye